Hey guys, welcome to my channel Medicos Perfectionalist. Today is the third video on rheumatology, understanding the labs. So let's get started. So in my previous two videos, I've talked about introduction to rheumatology and the basics of rheumatology. Very important to watch these videos before this one. As you recall, there is no single blood test that confirms the diagnosis in rheumatology. This is not like bone marrow biopsy. No, 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 no. Just because you have a positive ANA doesn't necessarily mean that you have lupus. The test has to fit with the patient's history and physical exam. If it looks like a duck, swims like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. This is called pattern recognition. So for instance, the lupus patient, usually a female, young in the childbearing age, with a male rash, photosensitivity, joint stiffness, maybe dark urine, um, like mouth rash, etc or mouth ulcers sorry so etc this is the pattern also you have heard when you hear hoofbeats think of horses not zebras so both horses and zebras can have hoofbeats both lupus and rheumatoid arthritis can have positive ANA but there is a difference Horses and zebras are different. Also, you can learn from this that common things are common except when the diagnosis is rare. So try to fo focus on the common things first. Now let's talk about a big topic, sensitivity versus specificity. I'll just explain in brief because I intend to talk about these issues in a later video when we discuss biostatistics. But anyway, sensitivity, what's the definition? Among the patients with the disease, how many have a positive test? So let's go back to this two by two table. Disease, no disease. And here we have positive test, negative test. If the patient has the disease and tested positive, this is called a true positive. If the patient has the disease but tested negative, this is called a false negative. Why false? Because the patient already has the disease. The patient had no disease but tested positive, this is a false positive. No disease, tested negative, this is a true negative. So, the definition of sensitivity. Among the patients with the disease, how many have a positive test? So, true positive over true positive plus false negative. If you understand math, you can tell that sensitivity and false negatives are inversely proportional. When sensitivity goes up, false negative goes down. But since false negative and true negative equals 100% because these are all the negatives, so when the false negative decrease, the true negative increase so that the total is always one. Makes sense. So let's go back here. Sensitivity increases, false negative decreases, and true negative increases because false negative and true negatives are opposite. Fine, so a highly sensitive test will have high number of true negative. If the sensitivity is 100%, 100% of negatives will be true negative and there is no false negative. Fine. So if the test is sensitive, like the sensitive test, if it came back negative, you do not have the disease. Why? Because every negative is a true negative. That's why a sensitive test rules out the disease. So let's say that you have a 60-year-old guy coming to you who thinks that he has lupus. And he asks you, doctor, I think I have lupus. Um, what do you think? So you reply, um, sir, why do you think that you have lupus? The patient tells you, um, I don't know, I was watching TV last night and I've heard about like raising lupus awareness and I think I might have lupus. So you explain, uh, sir, it's very unlikely that you have lupus because you don't have any symptoms and your age bracket doesn't fit. So the patient replies, um, doc, excuse me, I think you should do your job and run some tests. 
So you choose a test that's highly sensitive, such as the ANA test. You run the test, it comes back negative, which means that all the negatives are true negatives, which means that this guy does not have lupus. We have just ruled out lupus by using a highly sensitive test. Kind of makes sense. Let's go to specificity. What's the definition? Among the patients with no disease, how many have a negative test? So specificity equals true negatives divided by true negatives plus false positive. You can tell from here as specificity increases, what will happen to false positive decreases. Since false positive and true positives equals 100%, so when false positive decrease, true positives increase. Fine. So a specific test has a high rate of true positive. If the specific test came back positive, you do have the disease because every positive is a true positive. We have just ruled in the disease. So, in real life scenario, you have a 25 year old female. She comes to you with a male rash, photosensitivity, joint stiffness, dark urine, lots of stuff like kidney failure or whatever. And she tells you, doctor, I think I have lupus. My mom had lupus. My grandma had lupus. Everybody in our family had lupus. This girl or this young lady, of course, has lupus. So you run a test that's very specific, such as the anti-double-stranded DNA test. The test comes back positive. When the specific test comes back positive, you do have the disease because every positive is a true positive. And now you have confirmed the diagnosis and it's lupus. As Dr. House always says, it's lupus. It's gonna be lupus. It's always lupus. Let's summarize. If it's very unlikely that you have lupus, like the 60 year old guy, we need a test to rule out the disease you should choose a sensitive test such as ANA, negative ANA, no lupus, ruling out the disease. If it's very likely that you have lupus, such as the 25 year old lady, we need a test to rule out, to rule in the disease. So we should use a specific test such as anti-double stranded DNA or anti-Smith antibodies. Positive anti-double stranded DNA and positive anti-Smith means lupus we have confirmed or ruled in the disease. Let's talk about ANA anti-nuclear antibody. They are antibodies that attack component of the nucleus. They are called anti-nuclear. Um, Reported titers such as 1 over 80, 1 over 40, 1 over 320, whatever. This is the dilution at which the antibodies become undetectable. So if you have a disease, you should have high titers because it takes more dilution until we wash out all of these antibodies. So the higher the titer, the more likely you have an autoimmune disease. ANA is positive if the titer is higher than 180. We don't care about 1 over 40 or 1 over 20. No, no, no. It has to be 180 or more. Usually 1 over 160, 1 over 320, etc. ANA titers do not correlate with disease activity. Just because you have a very high ANA doesn't mean that you have a very bad, bad, bad lupus. Okay? Never do that. Healthy people can have positive ANA. In fact, one in every nine healthy women have a positive ANA. Again, we need pattern recognition. History, physical exam, then we go to the lab. Don't just like throw in and just order some labs. This is an idiot. Brief summary of these markers. Lupus should have positive ANA, positive anti-double-stranded DNA, positive anti-Smith antibody. Very cool. How about rheumatoid arthritis? Should have a rheumatoid factor positive, anti-CCP positive, and positive ANA. How about drug-induced lupus? You should find antihistones. Jogren syndrome, positive ANA, positive anti-SSA and SSB, and positive rheumatoid factor. Scleroderma, 
you have two types. Limited scleroderma should have anti-centromere antibody. Systemic sclerosis should have the anti-scleroderma 70 or anti-topo isomerase 1. Mixed connective tissue disease should have anti-U1 RNP. Very cool. Okay, do I have to have all of these to diagnose Jogren? The answer is no. It's all about pattern recognition. The complement system. Low complement levels can be seen in lupus. C3 usually goes down before C4. High ESR and CRP, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and CRP is C-reactive protein. They are high in any inflammatory disease. They are very nonspecific. Let me remind you of this challenge. Help me reach 25,000 subscribers and I'll start a new series. I have noticed increased number of subscribers. So thank you so much for sharing my videos. And we will do like a poll and you can vote which of these topics would you like to see next. The vote is coming very soon. There is also a challenge on Facebook. 101 question, new day, new question until the end of this year 2018. So please like my page on Facebook. Just Google facebook.com forward slash medicosis and click the bell and don't forget to subscribe to get new videos. Thank you so much for watching. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis. Be safe, stay happy and study hard. Until next time.